getting things started today, you know who it is. It's the Green Street Bully himself, representing live down in downtown LA. But you know, he's also the industry's very own Kaiser Brose. In my photo negative, Jason Beck, what do you have for us on this beautiful Friday morning? Yeah, Rico, that's right. It's finally Friday, you guys. I can't believe we made it. The work week is almost over at the end of the day. Can you believe it? But today, my story may be a sad tale. It may be a happy tale. Depends on what side of the fence you're on. But marijuana legalization is stalled in Mexico, but farmers and cartels are still making big plans to profit off of a new market. That's right. Every day at 5 a.m., Margarita, a 51-year-old farmer, jumps out of bed and lights a candle to St. Judas, a saint believed to listen to lost or almost impossible causes. Only after that, Margarita steps out to her front yard and looks over her marijuana plants, which are covered with a camouflage shaded cloth, looking like mash. Every morning, she says in a quote, every morning I pray to San Judas that the government don't destroy my plantation. It's been such an effort to put it back up after it got destroyed the last time, she told the insider. Mexican military personnel uh, de destroyed Margarita's weed crops during an operation back in 2019. Margarita doesn't work for any of Mexico's cartels or criminal organizations, and she is doing what she has learned from generations of ancestors. Marijuana harvesting has been her family's legacy for more than 100 years. And a quote, I really don't involve myself too much in the in the in the rest of the process from from the plant. I harvest, pick and trim my plants. And then if someone wants it, fine. If not, she says, I'll store it until it sells. Sounds like what New York is doing. Margarita's product caters to the Mexican market, reaching buyers through independent distributors, but also through criminal organizations like the Sinaloa cartel. The cartel's jailed kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was born in uh, Bagalajito, and the region is still the group's home turf. But all Margarita cares about is her product is selling as much as it did five years ago. The full sustain the um, the full uh, sacks of weed sometimes stay there in the warehouse for a month or two. And what do I do? How do I sustain myself? I'm not selling, she said in an interview. Margarita helps herself with a government assistance program called Sim Sembrando Vida, which hands out roughly $220 a month to small farmers in states like Sinaloa and neighboring uh, Chihuahua and Durango, a, a region known as the Golden Triangle for the intensive cultivation of marijuana and opium poppy there to encourage local development and discourage drug production. In a quote, I tried to harvest tomatoes, but it sells even worse than marijuana. The big companies take all the sales, and there is very little what I can offer in quantities, she said. Maybe she should try growing avocados at, or maybe getting some chickens and getting some eggs. At the current price, the weed margarita gets roughly $25 a kilo. She was expecting to get at least $500 this season for her harvest, but more than half of it hasn't sold. She says, it's not good time for weed. People are asking for different weed, uh, the one that comes from the gabacho. But we don't have those seeds, margarita said, using a term referring to the United States. Like other independent growers, margarita remains remains barred from uh, formal sales in Mexico where efforts to legalize marijuana have stalled. Negotiations over such a measure began in 2019 when the Congress approved a law to legalize the use, possession, and planting of marijuana. And four years later, it is still stuck in Mexico Senate. In 2021, the Senate passed a bill legalizing adult use cannabis, but lawmakers in the lower house held up the measure while they tried to raise the amount that consumers could carry in public in public places, um, make, make that higher than the proposed limit of 28 grams. While weed remains generally illegal in Mexico, farmers and criminal groups are not wanting to position themselves in what could be soon be a legal market. In a quote, 
We are not want we are not waiting for a law. The Mexican government took too long already, and meanwhile, other countries keep moving profits, and our and our sowers keep struggling. Uh, said Andres Savadiria, a lawyer and the founder of a NGO called Plan de Titicalia, which supports independent weed growers and the decriminalization of cannabis. In a quote, we are now focused on becoming independent and keep growing marijuana for a Mexican market that wants to use the plant in different ways, he said. Mexico's move toward marijuana legalization comes after several U.S. states legalized the drug, which appears to have put a dent in the cartel's profits. In a quote, this is a business that belongs here to Sinaloa, another Sinaloa cartel operative who works as a regional manager for marijuana operations in Calucan, the capital of Sinaloa State, told the insider in a previous interview, we lost a share of that business, but in no time we will take it back by producing, get ready for this, you guys, the best weed in the world. They're trying to steal my quote. After the arrest of El Chapo Guzman's youngest son, Olvido Guzman, in January, the Sinaloa cartel's weed operations are overseen by two of his brothers, Ivan Achivadio and Jesus Alfredo Guzman, members of a group known as Los Chapitos. The operative and uh, the, the operative and others in the business say the cartel is very interested in marijuana legalization, and some believe it because of Los Chapitos love the plant and its supposed benefits. Others think it's purely a business decision. Margarita, on the other hand, can't afford to grow premium quality weed since the seeds are at least 10 times more expensive and equipment like that used in cartel run grow houses to maintain the plants is a steep, steep, steep investment. In a quote, she says, I know that if I that that if I had that other weed from Los Gringos, I could be selling twice my price. But it's also very expensive. And I don't know the seniors are going to take it if I go into that business. Margarita said, re referring to the Mexican to the Americans and Mexican drug lords, respectively, I might get in trouble. Don't you think she says. Mm -hmm. This sounds like it's going to be a pretty rough one for this nice young lady who just loves to grow a little bit of weed plants and bundle it up and sell it in bundles. But I'm going to digress and see what you guys have to say. What do you think about Mexico and these cartels and just the regular traditional farmers trying to make a buck in Mexico? What do you all think? This is Jason Beck for the High at Nine News Hour.